What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah in the building, and I'm here with none other than my guy, Nate Dog. What's up, man? What's and, up? And this is the Grim Reaper Show. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. This is the Grim Reaper Show. Let me tell yeah, you yeah, something. Yeah, we, yeah, we changing the name today. <laughs> yeah, man. This is the Let Me Tell You Something podcast, <laughs> right. y'all. But as of today, obviously, we know this is dropping on Thursday when you guys are listening to us. Y'all get to hear the great sultry voices of uh, Nate and Isaiah. But uh, um, we're recording this on Tuesday, and this is mm. an important week. The reason why we need to make that clear is because some of the things we're going to talk about in today's show uh, are pertaining to cut day. Yes. And today is cut day. And rosters have to be cut down to the 53-man roster. Practice squads have been extended to 16 people, so there's a lot of other opportunities, but you have to pass waivers, all that jazz. We'll get into that. But today is cut day, and for those out there that are familiar with cut day, you guys understand that the rosters need to go from 80. It went from whatever it was, 1,000 yeah. guys down right. to 85, right. down right. to 80, and right. now it has to get down to 53. And a lot of people write that off. A lot of people just say, oh, yeah, you know, I got to get down to 53 people. But there's a lot of people's lives that are affected when it gets cut down to 53. You know, especially rookies mm. who have had their lives structured. Yes. From Pop Warner, co- high, you know, junior high, elementary, whatever, college. They have been structured. Yeah. Now some of these guys are literally going to be put on the street. And they and they lives, you know, there's no more – Colleges took care of you. The high schools took care of you. Mom and dad took care of you. Now you grown. Your life, and, and I know I'm going a little deeper than you think. No. But I realized when I got cut by the Washington, whoever their names are, yeah. you know, commanders, yeah. agronauts, whoever yeah. they are, <laughs> the football team, I was like, I was in lost in space. Yeah. Because I, I knew I wasn't going back to school. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, what, what am I going to do? But fortunately for me, they had another league, you know, in Turpentine, know about this, they called the US of L. Yep. So I fell into that league because okay. I knew I'm going to go up to Canada. Gotcha. Canada. So, but guys, as a rookie, you you are through. Yeah. A lot of these rookies are through, and they're either going to have to go back to school, finish their degrees, the ones that are graduated, they got to start that, that second career. And it's just a time of space in there where it's empty because football has been your whole life. And Grim yeah. Reaper is is is, is the Reaper. Wow. Yeah. Every, everybody knows who the Grim Reaper is. The Grim Reaper is the dude coming when you when when you're going to see when you go in the wrong direction. You going right. to, you going <laughs> to the other side of life. Um, you know, and we call it Reaper Days because when you get cut in the NFL, there's always one person that is literally structured. One person that has to say, "Come here." They have to say, "Come here, come here." And you say, as soon as they say, "Come here," you right. like, "Duh, they got right. me." Right. right. What does everybody say? Man, they got you. They got you, man. They got you. And you had that look because you holding your playbook like you've never held it before. You know, or your iPad, yeah, whatever. Whatever you, it is. Whatever, yeah. You know, because for me, the Grim Reaper was Bruce Mays. Mm-hmm. And me too. He would come to you and say, "Hey, man, uh, get playbook. your playbook. We got. We need to go talk to the coach." And. Normally he would try to catch you coming in the door. Yeah, so he had a, he had a table yeah. sitting at the door. Yeah, but if he missed you, you try to sneak around and hide from the reaper, <laughs> then he would get you in front of all the players. Hey. Like, hey man, come with me. Hey, that, we, uh, that's you see, you're taught from a young age. I know all of us were to look right. a man in the eyes right. when he's talking to you. <laughs> but on Reaper days, okay. yes. the last thing you want to do is make eye contact with anybody. Right. Uh, listen, listen here, Reaper days. You don't look nobody in the eye. No. You keep your head down. Matter of fact, if you got a hat on, yeah. you, you put your head down <laughs> and you just hope not to make eye contact because you feel like the Reaper, whoever that is for your organization, you feel like they have full power <laughs> whether or not who they wanna who they wanna grab and take into that meeting. You know, the thing about it is, is there's other options. You know, you you could be as soon as they put you on the wire, you can be scooped up by another team. True. This is where your agent really come into play. Yeah, got to get on the horn. You know, your agent already, you know, hey, boom, uh, they got me. Well, I already got a team that's ready for you. Yep. And when, we, when I played, it was so many options where a team would sign you, but they would hide you. Oh, yeah. You know. Uh, In the preseason, they would hide you. So yeah, nobody so, seen you. Yeah, so they, you would get released. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You would get released, and within a week, 
you up working out for another team. I mean, literally training for that other team that's hitting you. Now, if you do that, it's yeah. big fines to be paid. Yeah, yeah. But are you get on somebody's practice squad? Are you get, you know, are you get on somebody's pup or injury? Yep. So, there's so many ways they can hide yeah, you if they're willing to spend the money if they think you're a, Facts. a good enough prospect. But I want to peel back this onion a little bit. Now, you right. mentioned earlier about especially being hard on rookies. And I want to paint this picture for everybody so that they can clearly depict exactly what's taking place. Imagine you have one dream. Wow. Okay. You have one dream. You're six year old. You're six years old. Say, you know, in this case, obviously, you're a six year old little boy. And all you ever wanted to be is a professional football player. Everything that you do in life is always going towards the goal of becoming a professional football player. You don't work your butt off in Little League. You don't put your favorite player up on a poster in your room. <laughs> right? You don't play Madden. You don't play NCAA. Yeah. Then you don't play Madden. Right. And all of a sudden, you're in high school and you're taping up your. Yeah, taping up your shoes because you don't see somebody that right. you admire wearing it and you got the swag down and all of a sudden you start putting up crazy numbers in high school and you're blessed to have some scholarships thrown your way so boom okay now I'm going to college and you do your thing in college it doesn't matter if you're on a low level school or whether you're a high big time you know big five school and you do your thing and then all of a sudden boom you get into a camp whether you got drafted or whether you you know you got you got called on, on undrafted free agent but you get an opportunity Right, you show up to OTAs, you do good, you learn the system, you get in there, you're lifting weights, you're wearing all the gear. People are saying, Oh man, you know, you made it, you on the squad, you know, you walking around doing your thing, you know, Whoa. back home, mm. everybody's posting pictures of you. Look at my cousin, look at my boy, you know, he on the Dallas Cowboys. And all of a sudden, you know, you get to camp. You're competing. There's some guys that, you know, it's going to be hard to break the lineup, but you got a chance. You know, there's one or two positions at your group that are they're up for grabs, and you're doing all that you can, and you get to the preseason game, and, you know, maybe you're Brandon Smith. Maybe you're Brandon oh, Smith. Don't call my boy. Oh, like that. I know oh. it's your dude. I know. Maybe yeah, you're Brandon Smith. Wow. You're big, tall receiver, and you're and you're out there routing people up, and you're making plays, and you're not making any mistakes. You are scoring touchdowns. You toe toe drag swagging. Yes, right. You're right. You on the highlights on ESPN, and then you walk in on Reaper Day, and they say, "Get your playbook." Been there. Uh, imagine I've that. Been there, Zell. Imagine that. In. Everybody knows you go to school to set yourself up for plan B. But everybody's plan A, who's a who is an athlete, is to make it in the league. The league, man. That's your plan A. Your wow. plan B was, eh, is there. Yeah. Is there. I, I, really, be, I may be six months to a year from, I from completing this. I, I, yeah. I already graduated. A lot of guys have already graduated. A lot of them have. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't really want to exercise my second right. second option, right? I want plan A to work. Right. Okay, plan B is, is, a, is a break glass emergency button. Okay, but plan A is going well. I'm on a squad. I'm there. I'm part of the squad. And then I get cut. What do I have to show to corporate America that I'm prepared to walk into that world now? What do I have in terms of revenue that I've generated, money that I've made? Because, oh, don't think, don't think just because you've been on the Dallas Cowboys since OTAs that you have money. That's right. That's you've been right. making, making $500 a week. That's right. $500 a week. The trade that all your other friends have been working on since the time they were freshmen or sophomore in college, right? The, the, the job shadowing they've been doing, the internships they've been doing, the roles that they walk into from the time they graduate to all of a sudden now they're already working their way up this corporate ladder. They have experience in those fields. Right. What experience do you have as a player that just got cut by the Dallas Cowboys or any other organization? Cause I'm gonna tell you when you when you start trying to open up some of them corporate doors, they they gonna recognize you. Hey Nate, Cowboys mm -hmm. last cut right? It don't count in here. I'm sorry, it just don't count in here. <laughs> you know? Wow. And so you're starting at the bottom of the barrel. Yes. And you're battling a number of things. Number one, you don't have any experience outside of football. That's right. You put all your eggs in that basket. There's no other way. In college, you, they don't want you working other jobs. Right. They force you to put all your eggs in one basket. If you know, and, and, and let me put it in perspective. When people see professional athletes now doing things outside of their particular sports, it's shut up and dribble. Right. It's shut up and play. Right. We don't want you to be anybody else. You're just a player. Right. So now, all of a sudden, on the flip side, when plan A doesn't work out, 
everybody is saying, well, you should have focused on this. You should have focused on that. You should have set yourself up for a smooth transition. Yeah. But I thought I was supposed to just, you know, I thought I was supposed to just focus on what I was doing at the time. So it's a it's, it's very contradictory in terms of what people are, are you know saying that you should be. And I just want people to understand how difficult of a cutoff that is. To your point, some guys will have opportunity to come back on practice squad, and that's awesome because you're still attached and you're one step away. Some guys will get picked up as undrafted free agents and get you know and, and don't clear waivers. Maybe another team sees the value, right. but for a lot of other guys, it might be it. What is how many guys is sixteen on practice? Fifty three guys yep. plus sixteen. I don't know how many of that come out. Yeah, that's on teams. Yep, and this is this is the set this. This is what I'm, I'm gonna give you the killer. Okay. I call it an extended reaper. That's why I got on black. That's yeah. why I got on my yeah, black yeah. shirt. Yeah. I call this the extended reaper. To make the final roster, to practice for two weeks, to be on the 53 man roster, but to be that 53 Oof. from 47 to that 53 guy. And all of a sudden, they just tell you, we had an injury. And we got to release you. Mm. Now, people rosters are basically set. Yep. That is the that is that is the worst. I've seen this happen to guys because they have got went out and got their apartments, yep. signed their lease, went out and bought them a little car, yeah, and locked themselves into a payment. And that third week, they. There's no getting out of that stuff. And people don't understand the, the ramifications wow. of that. You go get an apartment. Let's, let's just say an apartment is $2,000. Yeah. Okay, $2,000. You've been making $500 a week, so $2,000 for a whole month's pay, pay or work, right? right? right. All right. your check. Right. You play, you play for the Dallas Cowboys, but all your check is going straight to rent. Right. Okay? Now, all of a sudden, you get cut. You got four. You get Most likely, they're not doing six-month leases most places. So, That's right. So now, all of a sudden, you got another eight months left on your lease. Yeah. You, where you where you getting that money from? Did you were you allowed to work in college? No, because Couldn't. after the first after after they make that final cut, they they cover your hotel room with another week. Week, and then they say, then hey, you got to get it out. out. And that's what I, that, that third week I tell people that third week they still are rolling rosters, yep. and where the Cowboys situated with offensive line. Oh Lord. Talk about that, honey. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just giving them an example. Yeah, how the offensive line is is not settled. You know, they may keep nine guys, but you at they two or three of them guys is going to be in the 47 to correct 53 man slot. Correct. Mm. So, so with that said, people, our listeners, they they they've been on job interviews. Right. I would say most most of them have been on job interviews, and right. and you like to think that when you go on a job interview, you actually have a shot at getting the job. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Right? Most people, if they told you when you called them, hey, when you come in for an interview, you're coming in an interview, but you really, you're not, we don't have any positions open for you. Wow. The spot's really taken. You don't have a chance. But you can come in an interview. How many people you think are going to take that? Not many. N- not, hard, many. not slim to none. Not many. Man. Slim to none. But Out of 10 people, you may get a half. But you just mentioned that 47 to 53, maybe six spots are available. Right. Every camp. Every camp. Maybe six spots. When you walk into camp, what, you got 100 people out there? That's right. So you got 40 some odd, 47, let's call it 47 people that are vying for six spots. <laughs> and you got to be at the right position, at the right place come to on. be into them, one of them spots. Come on. Because most of them are, are already solidified. Yeah. So maybe one spot per position. Yes, maybe one to two, depending on the <laughs> depending on the position. And are the injuries that or and there's injuries that might come out right? But going into camp, there may be one to two spots per position that are available. So if you're one of those bottom guys, you're coming to interview for a job that you can't win. <laughs> you are basically playing for thirty-one other teams. Absolutely, it's it's a resume builder. <clears throat> It's a resume builder. And most of the people that are listening at home would refuse to get off the couch and go do an interview that they know is not going to pay off for them. For. So since OTAs, minicamp, so you're saying what? 
five months, four months, you're interviewing. It's one of the longest interviews Long of your life. Long interview. Yeah. Yeah, they're watching Only everything. Only to be told on this day, I don't know what, what day is this, Tuesday, August the 30th, yep. at 3 o'clock uh, Central, 4 o'clock Eastern, we no longer need you. We don't need your services. Thank you. Thanks for all your effort. Yeah. Not, wow. It's not good enough here. That's why I put on my black shirt, man. I, I've been there. It sucks. I've been there. The, Greek, the Grim Reaper has... I've been, <laughs> I've been there five times. I've been there five times. They ripped my heart out. Five times. And I like wow. to consider myself to be one of the best athletes around. <laughs> five times, Nate. Sometimes it's because I didn't do enough. Right. Sometimes it was political. Right. Right. Either way, sometimes it was injuries. Either way, I wasn't good enough at that time. I wasn't valuable enough to those organizations five times in my life. Mm. And I was always the best at everything I did. Wow, okay, man. It's hard to deal with. Anyways, okay. All right, I just wanted to be people to understand that because most times people hear about the cuts and it's River Cut Day and they're like, oh, so-and-so got cut. That sucks for him. They don't really understand the depth of it or they'll see some names pop up and they're like, oh, I don't recognize that name, whatever. It's not whatever. It's, it is not whatever. These are human beings <laughs> right. that have given their absolute everything and I hope that everybody would give them the respect that is due to them regardless mm. of how big or little their names are. Thank you. Okay? Wow. Um, now, with that said, some decisions have to be made, okay? We can go down position by position and figure out what spots or what spots are available and who might get the ax on this Reaper day. So we're going to start off right off the bat, Nate Dog, with your favorite position, O-line. Since the last time we've been on this podcast, your, your man went down. Yeah, Tyron. Ty, Tyron Smith, and the chances of him coming back are slim to none, even though Mr. Jones thinks he'll be back in December. He, he, I, I personally think, I think this is his retirement injury. Yes, yes. He won't, you know, if it's not his re- enti- retirement injury, it'll be next year. Mm-hmm. Because th- how do you ask a 320-pound man who's built like a Greek warrior yeah. who's in his 30s, who something tore off the bone. To, you, you think he really going to come back in, in 10 games or 12 games and be and be effective? Now he's going to tap something else. It, 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 yeah, semi-retirement. If yeah. not retirement, yeah. uh, he'll come back next year. Do you, what do you think? What's your opinion? Do you think, think he's he, shutting it down? I, I think he threw. Then. I think he threw this year. And uh now No, they, no, 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 they, not this year. I'm talking about in general. Do you think that Tyron Smith think, is done? I think somebody in there may somebody may be in his head behind the closed door saying, Hey man, at least give it a shot. At least give it a shot. What would be his motivation? None. He's paid. He's paid. He's had a great career. Yeah. yeah He's none. a Hall of Famer. He's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Uh the only thing is going to be, is what he thinks in, in his heart. Okay. And and you know, you can't really tell because he always giving you that distant look. You yeah, know, when you're yeah. looking at him, he always giving you that look <laughs> like, I'm here, but I'm not here. And you, you, when you say something, he'll smile and he'll laugh, but he don't give you no indication that. Yeah. And he got up and walked yeah. off the field. The reports are he walked to his car and drove off and everything up with no hammy on the bone. That's a man. That's, that's a man. That's full a grown, grown oh, wow. man. Wow. Crazy. Okay, so offensive line. They Tyron Smith is down. His backup, um, Josh Ball, no. wasn't getting it done. No. His backup, Matt Well, let's go. This year's draft pick, injured. Try to tough it out through the last preseason right. game. He he got through the game, but I'm not sure how confident they are in his effectiveness with that shoulder. I've had three of those so- shoulder surgeries. I don't feel confident that he'll be able to hold up the whole year. Um, so they, their two backup plans don't look look good. Okay, yeah. so they've they've they tried to plan for it, but it didn't work out. And I heard a lot of people saying, "Well, they should have used one of their high draft picks over the last few years to, to draft his backup." They didn't really do their due diligence. Well, who would you have given given up, Nate? Would you have given up a Trayvon Diggs? Would you have given up a CD Lamb? How about a Micah Parsons? Would you have given up any of those guys to draft the backup for Tyron? <laughs> they, no, they uh, they did right. They didn't execute right. Mm. You drafted right, and you didn't execute right. If 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 Tyler Smith was your future left tackle, he should have been starting day one at your left guard, 
and then days when Tyron didn't practice, him and Ball should have been splitting reps. Mm. If how many Con reps? Has, how many reps did he take in, in camp? None. Zero. Zero. And if Connor McGovern is your backup center, which he played in the last preseason game, why wasn't he just the left guard, backup left guard, backup center, and backup right guard? So when either of these guys out, he was getting work yeah. as a backup. And so when you when you go into the last preseason game, all of a sudden you spring that on everybody. So that wasn't a smart – the execution of how we showed the fans wasn't very good. They're a step behind. Yeah. So the expectation as of the day that we're filming right now, uh, Tuesday the 30th, is from what we're hearing, and Nate and I get a little bit of insight from inside the facility, the expectation is for Tyler Smith to be the savior. Yes. And bump out to left tackle, even though he hasn't played it in five months. We got Tyler Smith. Left. Oh, I'll tell you about six months. Tyler Smith at left tackle. Connor McGovern at your center. Tyler Biotis. Is, I mean, excuse me. Connor McGovern at your guard. left guard. Tyler uh, uh, Biotis. Biotis is at your center. Martin and Steele. Mm -hmm. Those are your, those are your starting Starters. five. Okay. okay. Uh, the kid, Matt. Well let's, well, let's go. Well, let's go. You think they keep him active? Huh? You think they keep him active, or do they do they put him on IR? They go, they got to keep him active. Who who him and Matt Forniak is your backups? Okay, so that's I seven. Mean, that's seven offensive linemen. You got to right. carry nine. And they go they gonna keep they gonna they gonna keep Josh Josh uh, Ball Ball, but so that's he's eight. not gonna play. He's okay. not. He he's gonna be inactive. Okay. So now I don't have another guy. I don't. Do you have another guy? I don't have another guy. I think we have to go on the street. And get a guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think mean they're going to go. Uh, because uh, they're going to have uh, Tyron. Avion Collins. What number is that? That is number 76. I think he okay. had a pretty good preseason. He's not a, he's not a rookie. He's a veteran. And I think he he showed enough at the right okay. tackle position this offseason. I'm putting a star. Okay. Because what I saw in the last preseason game was, once again, I think, Bad execution on on the coaching part, and it just falls right on my own for Coach Fieldman. Yeah, is you have a first team offensive line, and you have a second team offensive line, and between that is one or two guys that you may put on the first team yeah. to look at, you know. And I understand that you have to get these guys looks, you know, yep. at different positions, but you don't sacrifice the unity that this thing has so we can get a look in preseason gotcha. or we can get a look in practice. You should have been preparing for the season. Yeah, so they – So you think that that last preseason game where most teams are literally just buttoning up some of their some of their um, last little details, the Dallas Cowboys were still experimenting. Yeah, they they playing too many games because to see Connor McGovern at center and we didn't see it – Enough of it doing you, – you went against Denver. <laughs> you went against the L.A. Chargers. Yeah. And why didn't you do this then in live fire? See, this is what you got to understand. If you're projecting who's going to be on your starting roster, which they talked about in opening day, it's some dudes – I'm sorry, you're not going to get to practice. Yeah. You, because I, I don't know – because it's all predicated on Tyron Smith. It was all predicated on him. We knew at some point he was going down. Yes. So you say plan A, which, which you already said was what? Plan A was what? Josh Ball. Correct. Didn't work. Yep. Plan, plan B. B, slide that kid out there. Yep. Okay, well, now we got to slide him out there with a high sprained ankle. And <laughs> now Connor McGovern... It's too many moving pieces on what should have been already settled. Can I help you understand something, Nate? Help me understand. I'm going to help to understand the people, too. The first time the Dallas Cowboys will touch the field with this offensive line. And as intact. Intact with this current lineup right. will be against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers week one. And let me just remind you of who's on the defensive line for the Tampa Bay why, Buccaneers. Why, 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 I just because that's that's set, what we're heading towards, to Nate. Set up like you Nate, was proud we're two to do weeks, this. Nate. We're two why weeks you had out. To set up like you're proud. We're, to we're two say weeks it. out, Nate. <laughs> William Golston, defensive end, bad boy. Vita Vea, a monster, a beast. Akiem Hicks. These are they run a three four. Yes, they do. They're linebackers, Nate. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the front seven. Fastest second second level in football. Right. And is led by Devin White. Nice kid. 
Levante David. Nice kid. Shaq Barrett. Can run. <laughs> Can run. <laughs> and who's their other guy here? Um, they walked down Antoine Winfield into the box. Against a first-time offensive line. Well, that's that position. Okay, uh, we're going to go <laughs> on to the next and one. And we only got uh, eight guys because Tyron Smith will go be – He'll be IR. He'll be IR. They'll keep – he'll make the active have, roster and then they'll move him to IR. My prediction, Nate, my prediction mm. is that they go get Marcus Cannon out of retirement. Okay. Okay. You've been, you've been screaming this. He's a, he's a Dallas guy. Right. He's a Dallas guy. He lives, he lives local. Okay. I think he's sitting at the house chilling. Now the price just went up, though. Right. The price just went up. He's a – Marcus. Effort, Cannon. He's a, he's a left tackle. He played, he, I think he has two or three Super Bowl rings with the Patriots. And he's a multi-pro bowler. Marcus Cannon. All right. He's chilling at the house, chilling okay. on the ranch. Okay. okay. So Riding I think, mules and beating down chilling. steers. All right. They, so they have to go grab somebody like him okay. who's sitting at the house because no team is getting rid of left tackles. I think there might be one team that just got, that is, is um, I think the Eagles are talking about getting rid of a left tackle. But when's the last time you've seen the Eagles and the Cowboys do a trade? It's not, it doesn't really happen. So there's a couple guys out there that they can trade for, but I'm not sure they want to give up the capital for it. So they have, they have to go get a couple guys. They have to get somebody who gets released as a backup, and then they need to go get a potential starter. Right. Okay? Because um, as you mentioned, not only would this be Tyler Smith's first reps at tackle in the NFL in practice or game, uh, but also he's injured. Yes. Okay. So um, going to the quarterback position. Uh, as of today, Ben DiNucci has already been released. He was the most successful quarterback in the preseason of the three that were competing. Ben DiNucci, Cooper Rush, and William Greer. Okay, so I think between the three of those, obviously DiNucci is gone. Between William Greer, they tried to give him the job. They did everything they could to give him the job aside from his injury that he had. Let me ask you this question before you you go into detail. How hard is it? Because I've never, I've been in a, Mm -hmm. how hard is it to judge a guy who comes into a game and who's under direct fire from the first snap. Oh, they were blitzing his tail. So he was under direct fire from the first snap. Yep. He got shook. Yep. Is that saying, okay, if he couldn't handle this, why do we need him? Uh, I, do don't say, think, I don't think. I don't think. you say he, under better situations, this kid is better than what he, he was throwing behind guys. He was off target. They was they're trying so to do everything and move the pocket. So what just, do you do with this? You just answer the question. You just answered the question. I wasn't judging him based upon the pressure that he was receiving. Right. I was judging him based upon his accuracy. Oh, it was it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. So that's something that I can't look past because if you're that shook that when we actually have guys open and opportunities to get it to him, you can't get you can't get the ball to him. That's a problem. Okay. That's a All problem. Right. They know what they have in Cooper Rush. Okay. So they, we we saying Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush wins that job. Okay. Quarterback. On this day, Tuesday, we believe Cooper Rush wins that job. Okay. Okay. All right. So your backup quarterback is there. People talking about three quarterbacks, not going to happen. You're not nah, going to have three quarterbacks. Too many, too many positions open up elsewhere. Air, everybody's going to hope. Their hope right. is that Ben DiNucci passes waivers and they can bring him back on a practice squad, just right. like last year. Um, okay. Going to the tight end position, Sean McEwing, uh, actually, as of today, Jeremy Sprinkle got released. Uh, I think he got an injury settlement. And Sean McEwing, in my opinion, Will be the odd man out, even though he is uh he's Mister Consistency for them. They right. really like the young guys, Ferguson and Hendershot. And, and I heard one of our guys on the DallasCowboys dot com said that uh, Peyton Hendershot had better numbers. Oh, he's a, he's he's their receiver. Yeah, they so he's he got- their big play. So so Dalton Schultz, the franchise tight end, right? He is a consistent guy. He's yeah, going to yeah. be redacted once him. He's going to make right. the tough catches. He's more he's Witten ish, right? Okay, ish, ish, he's Witten ish. Right. Okay, okay. Witt wasn't going to do nothing amazing. He was going to catch the ball and be where he needs to be, do what he's right. supposed to do. Okay, you weren't going to get necessarily huge plays out of him aside right. from every so often. That's what Schultz is. He's a security blanket, right. a, a very expensive one. Uh, Hinder, uh, not Hendershot, but Ferguson. Uh, Ferguson, Jake. Ferguson's the draft pick. Okay, the, uh, the draft pick. I mean, how did you like him, man? He got in the way he has some, of guys. He, you did. I, you were right. I was wrong. No, no, not yet. Yet. Not okay. yet. To date. I, to date. To date. Yeah. Because you've been correct. The fire, the fire is has coming. A, yeah, the real fire. <laughs> yeah. Okay? He hasn't played against the big dogs yeah. yet. But he's been, he's been good. He's been good. I like the direction that he's headed. Right. I think that he will be a good curveball and a good compliment to Schultz. Right. Because people have to remember, with Dalton Schultz being the guy for Dak, 
the person that's in this hip pocket playing in the wing set is going to be the guy that's going to be blocking. That's right. That's right. Okay. So you have to wait and see if Ferguson can sit in there and, and block a. Uh, my goodness. What's coming? We'll see early yeah. in the season. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll, they'll, you'll find out in the first game because right. some linebackers for Tampa Bay run 4 3, 4 4. Right. And they bring it. They like to hit. So you'll find out. And then Hendershot. Hendershot is their changeup. He's their curveball. He's their knuckleball. He's a guy that you really can't account for him because you haven't seen enough of him. And he has the most speed and the most uh, agility out of those other two. Wow. So they're going to keep him, I believe, over Sean McEwen. Okay. Okay. So okay. that's a tight end position. Now you suddenly you go down to running back. That's pretty much already set. You have Ezekiel Elliott. You have Tony Pollard and Enrico Dowdle. If there's any question about whether or not he was going to get pushed by Malik Davis and Aaron Champlin, uh, who both had really good preseasons, uh, Rico Dowdle did not suit up in the last preseason game. It wasn't. It wasn't injury. <laughs> so I'm going to put on. You go ahead and put him on there. Um, who else we got there? Wide right receiver. That's when it gets real. Okay. James Washington, I think he's going to start the year off on PUP, so that gives you uh, another roster spot. Um, but let's go ahead and go James Washington, Michael Gallup, who Jerry Jones has already came out this past week and said that he will not start the year on IR or PUP. He will be on the 53-man roster. But, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to put a question mark next to that. I don't agree with that decision, but I'm not the GM. I'm put a question mark. Yeah, he, he's the man. He's the owner. He's, he's the owner. He's, he's, he's the president. He came out and said it. I'm going to put be, a question mark. It'd be hard for him to backpedal on that statement now. Right. So we have James Washington. We have Michael Gallup. We have C.D. Lamb. Mm-hmm. Then your number four receiver is Noah Brown. Noah Brown. Okay. Your number five receiver is who? Jalen Tolbert. Jalen Tolbert, draft pick. Okay, he's going to be there. Right. That's five. Number six, somebody. Dennis Houston. You think Dennis Houston's six? Uh, he got to be. I mean, we talked about it off air. You know, he may not be the coach's pick, but he's. He's Dak's pick. He's Dak's pick. So, I, okay, so I, I don't disagree with you, but I will put him at number seven. Okay, okay. okay? So who is number six? There's somebody who had two returns for touchdowns. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to hope they don't even count him as a wide receiver, but oh, he's a receiver. Okay, so they're going to utilize him for fly sweeps and, and screens and everything else. So he's the number six guy. He earned that number six spot, right? So let's just imagine most teams carry six receivers. Right. Let's just imagine that James Washington is going to start the year off on pup. That gives you another right. roster spot. So now there's still six spots available, which means you now allow for Dennis Houston, Brandon Smith, or Simi Fajoko to slide into that last spot. Who you picking? I'm going with Dennis Houston because Dak like him. I yeah. Loves him. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm putting him down. And that and that, that So Simi Fajoko scores two touchdowns in the preseason, it doesn't matter. Has one of the best camps of anybody on the team, doesn't matter. Draft pick last year, doesn't matter. I I I tend to go with you. You said Dennis Houston. You've been saying that since I like Dennis Houston, but Simi Fajoko did what he was supposed to do this camp. And that's kudos to him. I've been the hardest person on him. But he had a heck of a camp. So I think it's going to be a very difficult decision and a very difficult conversation between management and Dak Prescott. Because Dak Prescott's going to say, Dennis Houston and me, we're, we're, we're synced up. I trust this kid. I know where he's going to be. I, I can rely on him. Well, management's going to say, well, we paid Simi Fajoko a lot of money last year. We paid him not only a signing bonus because we drafted him, but we also paid him money for all of last year where he only suited up for, I think, 80 snaps or something like that. Uh, and then they're going to say, and we, we have money invested into this cat. We don't have money invested into Houston. And Simi Fajoko is showing promise now. Putting a question mark by his name, I mean, that's the best I can do because it, it comes down to a lot of times, you know, I look at, you know, and I'm not saying Dak uh, is Brady, Artie Kidd, Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. but they had receivers yeah. that they wanted to keep. And they, and for two or three weeks, that guy that you kept over their receivers, he didn't throw him the ball. Mm. So is Dak like that now? Whereas you keep this kid, semi you utilize him, yeah. and, you know, and, and he be like, yeah, still not throwing him the ball. Come on, I hear you. All right, well, let's flip things over to the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, let's go over to the uh, the hardest decision I believe this team has to make, and that's going to be in a defensive line. And we need to start there. Uh, I know. And we're going with interior first. Okay, let's go interior. So you get a uh, because you get, you get let's, let's go ahead and say you get ten linemen. Okay, that's Neva Gallimore, mm -hmm. Quentin Bohannon. Okay, now these you know now now my third tackle. Cause I think they'll keep three, right? Okay. I think I think they keep four. Oh, you think they keep four? I think they have to keep four. 
Okay. Now, Osa, those are my three. Now, this is where you had a, a great opinion on. Tristan Hill versus Tristan Carlos Wallace. Wall- so share that with everybody. I think Tristan Hill is a, as a quick guy. He's an Aaron donald esh right. type of guy. He's not necessarily going to bull rush everybody off the ball because he doesn't have the size, but he's quick. He's a penetrator versus some of these other guys right. that we mentioned, Osa. Uh, and, you know, now, Osa's along that line, too, but right. Quentin Bohanna was brought in to be the run stopper. Right. Neville Gallimore was brought in to be the run stopper. Osa and Tristan Hill were in there to be their quick guys. Carlos Watkins was supposed to be there. He put on some weight, and now he's a bigger guy. But uh, Chauncey Golson's in that mix as well. But I believe that it's going to be Osa... Big Bo, Gallimore, and I think they're going to give the nod to Tristan Hill. Okay. I think they're going to get rid of the veteran, Carlos Watkins. I don't think Chauncey Golston makes it at the defensive end position. I don't okay. think Dante Fowler makes it at the defensive end position. Okay. Let me say this right here. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got it. Oh, John Ridgeway. John Ridgeway, the draft pick this year. Nah, fifth, uh, no, no, no. He didn't. What, what did he not show you this preseason? He won a run stopper. He didn't make no plays run stopping. I, 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 but I people seen the highlights in the last game, Nate. He made a couple plays in the last game. That's what they gonna see. Okay, well, <laughs> I know Carlos Watkins played great. A, he played he, great. He played great, and and Tristan Hill played great, but. I'm Ooh. putting question marks next to them. Who do you uh, get rid of between those two? I, 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 I w- if it came down to those two, who are you getting rid of? Who has more promise? Or who can you rely on? Performance, I got Carlos Watkins. Mm. Performance, his consistency over the years, okay. his performance. He puts, put, uh, I, I, I couldn't take Tristan Hill because I haven't question marks. He's flashed. Mm. And he's dominated in the, in the preseason. That's fine. Okay. But Carlos Watkins played for you during the season and did a nice job, right. and he did a great job in training camp. So that's a tough decision to come to. So I got promise over performance. Guys locked locked in. Promise yeah. over performance. That's right. Always when you when I see what you can do, when you perform, I'm always uh, put you ahead of potential. Okay. All right, all right. So now you got to go out to the defensive end position. So those are your four interior linemen. Okay. Now you get to keep Marcus Lawrence. Sam Williams. Okay. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong. That's three. That's three locks. Those I, 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 Dante I, Fowler, what you think? He, he played, man. He played. I mean, he played was, against backups, but he dominated them. Was he a, was he a leader? Yeah. I mean, so? to me, to me, I don't know what I said. I wasn't close to the team for his. Who's the leader? Who's, but when he was on the field, he showed that he could still he still he has some he could pop. still play. I don't believe that he shows that he's a leader. Okay, and I take that not only from just surveying him, you know, right. around the team, but I also take that from his post snap penalties. Wow, you know, he's posting. He had a post snap penalty right. in that Denver game, and it's just like you. Even though everybody's gonna say, "Oh, that was one play," but as a vet, you can't do that. Okay. You know what I mean? You just can't do that as a vet. Not when you're not when you're being brought in to show the way. Like the Mandalorians, this is the way. You know, this is this the is the way. Else, yeah, man. I like that show. I, I, I watched but, that quick. Oh, but yeah. when he looked to the sideline, Dan Quinn looked at him and said, This is not the way. <laughs> that yeah. is not the way. Wow. Right? So you can't be back and forth, make good play, and then hurt your team fifteen yards. You can't do that when yeah, you're because we don't get a chance to put you in the tank and let you rebuild and no. re- regenerate. You know what I'm saying? Like the nah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, can't put you in the tank, man. All right, so tough decisions there. Um, don't know who's going to get that last spot. And Story Jackson had a really good camp as we looked at the linebackers. Right. I think that these are all sewn up in terms of Vander Esch, Michael Parsons, Anthony Barr, Jabril Cox. Those four will be there. I think you carry five linebackers. It's going to come down to Story Jackson. Luke, Luke Gifford, Gifford, Devin Harper. I'm going to say this right here. Damone Clark is put on the, um, uh, it was a non-football injury list or whatever. Real Cox didn't look bad in the preseason. When he played this last game, he didn't look bad. He didn't I mean, look what, great, though. Uh, no, but I'm saying for a guy that's coming off the injury. Correct. 
Correct. And that's why they brought in Anthony Barr, uh-huh. because to get his Security. kid a chance, yeah, yeah to, to heal. Yes. You know, because we went into training camp, and they really was high on Jabril Cox, which I am high on. Yeah. But that knee swole up on him, and so they went and got Anthony Barr. Yeah, yeah, so this gives him a chance to, okay. to grow. So right. Luke Gifford played a lot uh, in training a, camp. core special teamer. Yeah, and he played a lot in training camp. He got a lot of look until Anthony showed up. Imagine yeah. if you can have a Luke Gifford that's faster. Would you take him? Yeah. Devin Harper. Okay. Okay. So Luke Gifford has proven to you that he's a trusted, reliable, right. core special teamer. But right. here comes this Devin Harper that you draft late in, late in the draft this year. Yeah. You give him some money, and he's a faster version of a Luke Gifford. See, th- and this is what I hate is on the offensive side, we just able to put lines up on the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then – no question marks. Over here, we got such great competition to I only got three defensive linemen, interior, three linebackers, two, you know what I'm saying, two question marks, you know, because these guys are competing. You just, you don't know what the coaches are looking for at those positions. Coverability, uh, run stopper, uh, overall game. So, so, you, uh, so I got Michael Parsons, Leighton Van Der Esch, Anthony Barr, Jabril Cox, and I got Luke Gifford and Devin Harper, question marks. We'll I think see. Devin Harper beats out Luke Gifford. Okay. Devin uh, Harper, I, got- I mean, you you look at it, man. This is Luke Gifford's fourth year. Mm-hmm. Fourth year in the league. Right. Okay. And six foot, 243. Six, three, sorry. Six, three, 243. Fourth year in the league. Then you look at Devin Harper, six, three, 235, runs a four, four. Gonna cost you less, less wear and tear. You financially, we'll you financially invest in him. We'll see. And he's way faster. Okay. So I'm going with Devin Harper on okay. that one. All right. Uh, secondary, going to the safeties. How many safeties do you carry, Nate? Dog. Uh, they run three. You say you run. They run that big safety package. They, they, they like to have three safeties okay, on the field. Let, let me let me look at it. Curse is one. Mm-hmm. Israel. Well, Kwame, you think he earned his spot? Oh yeah. He gonna mess around and take somebody's job Ooh, if they ain't careful. The cornerback yeah. turn safety who struggled last yeah. year coming up and having yeah. contact. All of a sudden he comes back in this preseason. Not only does he come up and start hitting running backs, but he starts getting interceptions. How many do they keep? Five. I'm going with Marquise Bell. He, he five. Uh, I think you gotta go five. Marquise Bell. Okay, that's one, two, three. Now I'm looking at Donovan yep. Wilson, Malik Hooker, and Malik Hooker. What do you do, man? I think you keep four. Curse, Curse, Hooker, McQuamu. My boy Bell gonna make it. I'm telling you. Bell over Wilson. That, that that you know what? Wilson's not a starter. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a question no, mark. No, you can't. I'm gonna put a question mark. <laughs> Nate, don't put a question mark next to everybody. No, I'm gonna put a question mark next to Bell. Okay. You know. Cause, you just, cause do you my, do you run the risk of cutting him? And him not clearing waivers. Yeah, you do. Because but Donovan Wilson been hurt. Donovan Wilson been hurt. So but when tell me about Malik Hooker. Does he make it? Yes. Malik, okay. Hooker, Malik, Malik Hooker's okay. a lock. Okay. Malik, 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 Malik Hooker, Malik Hooker, J. Ron Curse, Donovan Wilson, those are your three starters. Okay. Those are your three starters. Yep. Israel McQuamu's number four. Okay. Bale, I think they have to cut him and hope he comes back. So I got a, I got a, I got a question mark. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm not gonna fight that. Okay. Curse Wilson Hooker and McQuam. Boy, he he played. Boy, boy. he that did what he played. needed to do. Yeah, he played. He earned his way Absolutely. onto this roster. Absolutely. My boy Marquise Bell was an outside chance. All right, go ahead on. Yeah. All that's- right. Last position. Right. Last position. We're going to the uh, to the cornerbacks. Trayvon Diggs lock. Jordan Lewis lock. Uh, Anthony Brown. Anthony lock. Brown lock. Uh, Nation Wright or Deron Bland lock lock. Uh, Nation Wright, CJ Goodwin lock. You think so? I think they move on from him. Wow. I think they move on from Kevin Joseph. I do too. That's what I think they move on. I think too. How many are they keeping these guys? One, two, three, four. You gotta have at least. You gotta have five to six, man. Five or six. 
you're gonna have you're either gonna have five safeties or five cornerbacks, one of the two. I can't call it, man. I ain't putting no question mark next to Kevin Jones. Matter of fact, you, you, got, you, no you have to have six. You Na- have to, Na- you, Nation. Uh, this is when it gets tricky. Is he, because, a, is he a favorite of the coaching staff? I like Nation. I think he was in position to make all plays. The bad penalties that he had this, this preseason were because he was in too good a position and he didn't have patience. But this is when it gets tricky. You would like to keep six cornerbacks. But do you keep five cornerbacks – and then when you need a six cornerback due to injury or, or something like that, you bring Israel Mukwamu down. Let me tell you something, man. Keep C.J. Goodwin. Ooh, what else he going to do? He don't play defense, Nate. He's a core special team. Uh, he is, but he don't play defense, Nate. If anywhere we're going to keep an extra guy that's going to be on defense, I'm going to have to <sighs> underline C.J. Goodwin. Now, you can do what you want with Nation, right? And you can do what you want with Kevin Joseph. I'm just being honest. And in, right. and this kid played, he he's the only I, I think we had a guy like four or five years to do the same thing, Nation, be in perfect position, but for some reason you gotta get handsy. I, I don't you know have to why. Keep him. I think you have to keep him. I don't okay. be, I'm taking Nation over CJ. Okay. All right. Well I got I got CJ. And I appreciate CJ. And I love CJ yeah. and I, I I love everything about him. But you have, when you start getting down to the nitty gritty on these decisions, you really have to start figuring out how much value do they give us. Okay. Nation right. Nation gives you a, a viable option on defense and special teams. Right. CJ Goodwin gives you a viable off, uh, option on special teams. Okay. That's the roster, Nate Dog. And uh, can't wait to see. Due to lack of good kickers out there, Brett Maher, Maher won the position. Yeah, due to lack. But there's, wow. been, hey, there's some kickers there are going to get released now. Yeah, I know. So maybe by the time this show airs, we'll have some different information out there. Maybe we're all wrong, but maybe we're all right. We'll find out here when this drops on Thursday. We need y'all to keep listening in. Have your black shirts on. Just have a week of black shirts. Just, just rock the black because shirts. The, you know, the, the Grim Reaper, it, you know, it ain't times that I'm going to be down and I'm not down now because I'm glad this ain't me getting released. <laughs> I hope I ain't getting released. You know what? But, this, uh, this, this is what we want y'all to do before we sign off. For y'all that have kids, okay? For everybody that have kids, this y'all experiment. I just want y'all to see the faces and then just imagine. Take a big black garbage bag. Go to your kid's room and just start throwing all their stuff in it. Throw all their stuff in it and then wrap it up and throw it over your shoulder and see what your kid's expression is. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on in the NFL <laughs> today. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something, man. That was one of the best analogies right there. Because kids got a way of giving you looks like. Absolutely. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? And then they going to get on the phone and like, do you, my mom or my dad just, uh-huh. can you believe? And they'll be FaceTiming their partner, hey, can hey, you? Hey, you know what I'm going to say? What? Let me tell you something. I'm going to take that <laughs> phone, too. we see y'all next time. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs>